Hey guys, how you doing? Yes, this, this is not a test, this is the real thing. Um, we're talking about Genesis here. Genesis, and we're in continuation of this of the book of Genesis. We're somewhere around um, the the tenth chapter, and there's a there's a like a lineage of people, words, a list of names. I've gone over this before. I think at some place else, just a little further down the road from us, or up the road, or whichever way you would go with it, somewhere back in the back. You know, I've got a mess of videos, lots of them. I mean, a whole mess of videos. And so, somewhere amongst them, you should be able to find a breakdown. That chapter 10. And so into what happens is, is we're at the beginning of the Bible. We're at the beginning of, of this creation. And one of the things that, um, that, that we hit on here on this channel is the spiritual side of the Bible. And that is, is that even with the beginning, when it comes down to the beginning of creating earth and man, this was on chapter one, we find that God starts to create man while he's doing this earth business, okay? He, them, that created in their image. This is, what was, which one was this one here? Uh, da -da 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 -da. Chapter 1, 20, uh, uh, and six, 26, which would be an 8. When God made man, he made them in their image. This is when, when man is being created. On the first in the first chapter and of course when it gets down to the second and the third chapter does he finally create a woman now this is just to show you that this is all spiritual this is all inside he doesn't he doesn't knit them clothing until they kicks them out of heaven and you know and you when you're in heaven you have to be in this child mode or in the spirit mode so all the time that man when man was made and brought over into the garden and all this stuff, this is all stuff that is inside of us. This is not some garden that's out on the outside world. This is heaven up in our mind, the right side of our brain. That's all this is. We've got to find some way to occupy this part. This is the go meat. So he never found anyone, didn't have anyone. All the other animals have one, but he doesn't have one. So God creates one out of his bones. All right, so this is the creation of consciousness. The male and the mind got to do all the matter and everything, and now we need this person that's going to go and do all the saving. And this is the male, the female, that creates the child. No children yet in the story, you guys. Not until they have Adam, not until they have Cain and Abel. And Cain and Abel, is the, it represents the same symbolism as that does with Esau and Jacob. Jacob is the one that's going to run off with the inheritance. Uh, in this situation, this is the with God, but whenever we have our first, we got the tiller of the field, the guy that's working on the ground, that's Abel, or Cain, and Abel is the one that does the sheep. The sheep are the one that God loves, and the, 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 the Cain carnal side, he care less about and that pisses off the carnal side so the carnal side kills the brother and no there's now no longer communication between people that till the land and God so this is a problem and it's met later on when we meet Noah and when Noah comes in he's here to take away this burden this coat this this uh, uh for tilling of the land, this curse that is brought about, okay, by Adam. Adam and, Eve, and, and, and later on, because of uh, because they follow in line, this idea, because it's just the mind at first, and then we got to have the seed, we got to have the seed, and this seed winds up being the brother, okay. And so whenever it comes down to it, you know, this is why I say, am I my brother's keeper? Yes, you are your brother's keeper. But in this situation, 
this is where the first curses come from. All right, between his seed and her seed, and the seed is our is the inside of us, the the uh, the the, uh, the our soul. And now we're on our way. We are coming from the east. Okay, we're coming down out of the mountain now. This is even after uh, with this is uh, 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 Noah and his kids. Okay, because the whole world's been erased. There's no one else on there except for Noah and his family and these animals being released upon the world. Brand new, brand new, brand spanking new. Nobody on earth. So here we go. So um, this is when we will get this the next story, which is the Tower of Babel. Here we have all these people building towns and cities, and there's one city that they have in particular, and that's the city of God. It hasn't really come to life yet, but at a particular time is the city of Babel. We're talking about the outside world. We're talking about uh, populating the earth, and all of these were the coming from this family of Noah, populate the earth. And in the process of this, Noah is the only one that's been saved. Everybody else is not. And so they go about building this Tower of Babel. This is trying to, to, to God. This is what hasn't been created yet. There isn't anything. We just learned about the four of the, you know, going to meet the top of the mountain. We know that Noah walked with God. And so this is this idea that, you know, only Noah is connected to God, okay? And all of these other people that stem from him aren't. They're not connected, nobody, all right? And so as they're going through life, the first things they do is, oh, we, we need to give some worship and some thanks, and they want to build these cities, and so they create something out of brick and mortar. Whereas it, this is an outside attempt to create, to connect with God. But it's in vain. Even God comes down and says, hey, I'll fix this. This is when everyone was of one language. One language means everyone thought the same way. Everyone, you know, the mind was one. All right. And he's going to come down and he's going to cause trouble. And so he whacks them and now everybody's scattered abroad. So it's this, you know, splitting of the brain. To where no one can talk about it, no one knows what they're saying, or no one can understand each other at this particular point. And so uh, this 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 is an outside attempt of connecting to God and God. Hey, look at these guys; they think they can do anything now. But it was an act of us going on our own, to come and find about our own religion. And so when we did this, this is where we fell again. And this is like, oh no, will these guys ever learn? But anyways, this is our, 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 the new world, the new land, the new world. And it's gonna, it wants so hard, so much to be a part of God, or to have some kind of, of a thanks going to God for all of this around us that was given to us. And so still in this beginning stage is this, this, we'll build our towers to God. And so this is the business of, you know, serving the wife, going to the wife, breaking away from mother and father, going to the wife and settling for the lower. So this is this fallen angel stories. All of this business works along the same line. So as they're building these new towers and new things, this is the folly going on. All right. And it wasn't just Christians that did this. Everyone who take, takes their holy word, the word of the holy word, and starts bringing it to life, to flesh, making it real. Doesn't mean they're making it real. This because they're, they're saying like Zeus and Apollo and all these things. These are gods. They're not man. But you know, man brings God down to earth so they can be closer. And that's where we get this Tower of Babel from. And so next thing that we're going to be getting out of this is as we're traveling, we're going to wind up. Um, we're the next, I think the next group of, of people in this, group, in this story are going to be about Abraham being woken up. 
could sleep. He told him he's going to have to get away from his father's family, get away from his father's land. He's supposed to get up and go and, and leave this because there is no uh, worshiping of God on earth right now. Everything is separated from earth. So when people are separated or are separated from God, their children go to ball. So, of course, that's these people, you know, celebrating the, the, the children being killed and children being given up. And even God, through these stories, reminds us, I'm going to take away your firstborn. And so not only does God pull this, this out from under us, pull our, 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 uh, our messenger, our, our child, our, uh, our brother, right out from under us, uh, that we also find that kings and queens and stuff like that on the outside world will also take away this child from us. And so in scripture, that'd be the way, you know, the, the kings that come say, we're going to go and kill everyone under two years old. All right. If we're going to, or God telling everyone on the Passover to do a certain thing in order to, uh, to, uh, to not be bitten by this plague that kills your firstborn son. Now, for many people, they think that this is a real life physical person, but it is not. It is your messenger. It's your spirit. And this idea of eating from the tree of good and evil, and you will die if you do, is the same question. It's, I mean, it's the same statement as it's if you drink from this uh, strange woman, if you take from her, if you take from religion, you also die. This is also the, the letter situation that the letter of our Bible, the words, the words that we read, the Gospels themselves, that if we take those in, we die. That is the strange woman. So you'll find that this is our replacement for this, uh, for mother, the mother of us all. Not even Eve becomes, she, I mean, she is a mother of us all when it comes down to, she's the first of our consciousness. But then when it comes down to it, everyone from this particular point on cling to the wife. And that's as far as they get. They can't get anymore because she's lower side. So this is after the fallen angels. No one is connected to God. Only those few prophets that the Bible speaks of, of which, you know, in this particular spot we are in. We've just done Noah, and now we've gone uh, through uh we're on our way to, uh, uh, let's see, who's first, who's next, or who's next? I'm pretty sure it's Abraham and Sarah. Of course, it's Abram and Sarah. They, neither of them have the God in them. You can see that they've gone on. They're 80, 90 years old when they get all this business to get up and get out of your father's house and stuff like that. This was when they're old people. Time to get the hell up and out of this here. So they've already done all of their living, all their youth and their vanity. They've done just like the stories they're telling us is that what happens in our youth is vanity. And so that we're supposed to grow from this particular part. You're supposed to grow from this particular part of our, of our body. Go from death to life. And so as our Bible brings us into the fruit of things, we find right now that that uh, that it is it's going to be Moses and his staff that's going to bring us out of I mean all of these stories all of these things is it I put man into a deep sleep and then I brought woman out of him this is how it is when we go into our deep sleep in these stories when we are put to sleep when we are brought out I mean we're put under a sleep God then brings about the Holy Spirit. That's how it works. That's how all of these things. If we're lucky, we follow Jesus. He meets. We. He introduces us to the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit cleanses us of our sins, and that's the basis of being saved. That we, you know. Uh, we, we go from, from not having God in us for a really long time in our lives to this vow of the Nazarene, 
where we won't cut our hair, we won't drink any wine from this vine, that we will go on without God during a particular time of our lives until we get this job done, until we get our works over with, then does God come in our lives. So all through Genesis is talking about how we don't have God and that only a few people do. And that when and and that we have to we we made this vow to to be lower than God and to, which means not to have Him with us. So all we have is Father, and this is our trespasses. And that only when we build this place inside of us, and it takes the outside world. This is what we find out through later on in Genesis with Moses and the building of the tabernacle. And later on, with uh, finding out about uh, you know building the temple itself, these are these stories. They just repeat themselves over and over again. But it's talking about how we have to go through this business. That we have to recreate the word, the the road even to this. The road to heaven is not even there. Everything's just sitting in this dormant state. And it's got a cherubim up here and a cherubim over here. And it's got a sword, you know, turning all in different directions. So it will keep that middle place sacred. No one's going to be able to go in there. Nobody. Nobody is allowed in there. Nobody knows how to do it. And all these stories, it's about what do you do now? You got to learn now what we have to learn about mother and father. That's how we found out. Who mother is? Mother, the mother of us all. It's the right side of our mind. Jerusalem, which is above, that is free. It's amazing. But she's all we're looking for. And if you if you ride the wave, if you ride the top of the Bible and, and find yourself snared on the gospels, well, that's all part of it. We're meant to be in this field of God. No matter what, look at us as corn, look at us for any, as anything, look at us as a tree, look at us as a vine. Remember, look at us as the tree, all right, because Jesus is the vine, and if we got the kundalini going on, that's Jesus. And if we actually can feed from this and make it our own, then we're also the branch. We're using this. We're bringing it to life. And that's all these stories are about. I want to do a quick synopsis for all that because I've done them all before. And they're no different than, than, than the last time I said them. But I want to move on to other stories and other things. You know, put, pick apart other parts of our body. But for right now, I've done, I've, I've taken Genesis and just peeled it, peeled it like it was a, an orange. And it's just beautiful. And it seems as though every time I've done it, I get a little bit more of an insight to it. Because all of these stories represent being in this mid-zone, being in the, even this, the story of, of uh, Noah, of this build yourself an ark. This whole thing is a meditation story. Everything is happening on the inside of us. So it's an inside situation. All these stories in the Bible, that's why it's a spiritual book. It's being written to you in a very fleshy way, but even all that flesh is represented as spiritual stuff. Seeing Jesus in flesh, that's a spiritual situation. That's not a physical or, you know, it's not a physical thing. It's a mental thing. Because we can't see any of these guys. No, they're, they're all, it's all spirit. All of it. All of it is spirit. Every bit of it. So... Um, uh, I'll chat with you in a little bit. I just want to let you know that I'm not going to go through every one of those things with this. I've already done that. I've already done that. Okay. And, um, well, if something happens in between, it's important. We will do something. But, um, yeah, you know, like there's some individual pieces of the story when it comes down to it in there with, um, uh, uh with uh, Abram, Sarai, but I'm pretty sure we've done those two. 
because I can remember knowing just very well that if we only use the name Sarai, she becomes the the bitch, you know. But when she gets the breath of of, of God in her, she becomes a princess. I'm very sure we've talked about this because it's very clear in my mind that just the breath of God in you brings you from the awful person to a nicer person, no matter who you are, no matter what you think of yourself. All right. So what I'm going to leave off on today is, is that those people that believe in Jesus, they can save, they can, they can save themselves. Do you know what that means? To believe in Jesus and believe that Jesus dies for your sins? That means that you believe in yourself. That you believe in yourself to go and take the bull by the reins and take care of this business all by yourself. And that you believe that you can do this. You're not relying on someone else to do it. You are taking the bull by the horns. And you're doing it on your own. The rest is up to God if he accepts you or not. Because it's very clear in the book of Acts. That in that day when you come up and call me Lord, Lord, he says, I'm not going to be answering that to a good number of people. Do you understand? There's only a few people that get this. And, not a, and no one is guaranteed. This is only God's going to choose whether or not you will are, you are come out of this or not. But it's going to take you to bring it before him. And then you either get accepted or not. All right. But I'll tell you, the first sign of it is, is that you have to, you drop religion. You're no longer following religion. If you're a saved person in this Bible, the last thing you do is preach the gospel. I love you guys, and I'll see you in a little while.